want to get back to the Hey, Forgiveness Nation, I'm here with Kiana. Just got to meet her, and I love what she stands for about forgiveness and letting things go. And we just believe as you do that, you'll see God's blessings in new ways. So we bless you, we pray for you, and believe, and you'll see an awesome 2019. and you are tuning in to another episode of Forgiveness Friday. So, of course, you know you have to do this amazing thing for me, and that is go down to the bottom, maybe the left, maybe the right, whatever it is. I don't know if you're team Android or if you're iPhone like me. You can go ahead and share, share, share this message out. Today's guest is Wanda Briscoe. And guys, when I tell you she has amazing testimony, a phenomenal story that she is going to share with us today, I am so thrilled and honored to have her here with us today. Last week, we had an amazing show. This week, you're tuning in for nothing short of amazing again. So, guys, I'm excited. This is Forgiveness Fridays, and I just want to welcome you, Miss Wanda you. Briscoe, uh, for, for tuning in, of course, and then joining us here, actually live in studio on set. So, how Thank are you, you doing today? I am great. How are awesome, you? Awesome, awesome. I am doing great. <laughs> And uh, guys, you know, we have to jump right into it. It is testimony time. And there's a lot, you know, that Miss Wanda Briscoe has experienced <laughs> in life. And um, I'll say short because, you know, God, yeah. we want to live an extended life. Yes. So the short life that she has lived thus far, um, she has gone through some challenges, yeah. some ups, some downs and some turnarounds. So right now, um, welcome again. Thank you. And I want you to go ahead and tell our viewers all about your testimony and how forgiveness relates to you. Okay. Thank you for having me. It's an, such an honor. You're um, welcome. In two th Do I look at you? Oh, sorry. In 2011, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And I'm the first in my family to be diagnosed with breast cancer. No one in my family had it. So we didn't know anything about it. It was where did it come from? At the same time I was diagnosed with breast cancer, I had just walked away from a 15 year toxic marriage. Oh wow. So I went through, and four months later I'm diagnosed with breast cancer. Mm. So, so I went through breast cancer and a divorce at the same time. And so I was, there was a lot of unforgiveness there. Mm. There was a lot of bitterness there. There was a lot of anger there. And at the cancer center, one of the things that they taught us is that um, unforgiveness and bitterness can harbor sickness. Yes, yes. And since there was no family history, nothing at all, I believe that that's where my breast cancer came from. And God used it as a form of forgiveness mm -hmm. and to give me a platform to teach women about breast cancer and to also teach them about forgiveness. Yes, I think that is amazing. Um, I, I looked and I was reading your bio and you said something phenomenal and profound to me is that you didn't look at your cancer diagnosis as a death sentence, Correct. but you looked at it guys as a life, life sentence. sentence. And so within saying that, you know, that's amazing. Usually mm -hmm. people will go through something that's life altering mm -hmm. and they take that and they have this woe is me spirit yes. or, you know, everyone should feel mm -hmm. down because I have this illness. Mm -hmm. But for me, and also I'm believing for you because this is what you stated, yes. that it's an opportunity to go out and live your best life. It was. And it also, what I found for me 
is that I was existing and not living, mm. just going through the mundane task of everyday life yes. and not living life. So breast cancer forced me <laughs> to live. It forced me to get to know who Wanda was yes. and who was she becoming. Okay. So in so. that, that transition, uh, what is it that you that you learned about yourself? I learned a lot, good and bad. Mm -hmm. I learned that I was a people pleaser. Mm -hmm. I learned um, that was me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I learned um, that I was not serving God fully. Mm -hmm. I was going through. We had a. Um, I was married to someone in the church, but we like didn't pray together or mm -hmm. stuff like that. It was like a form of godliness. Wow. And even though I'm a PK, but you know, it's like, I kept running from the call, you know, I don't want to, you know, I grew up in the church. So I was like, you know, I don't want to follow in the everything. You want to do something. <laughs> yeah. Different. yeah. Yeah. I get it. I get it. Uh, I grew up in the church as mm -hmm. well. Uh, I wasn't a PK, but <laughs> my grandmother was in the choir. Yeah. So I had to be in the choir. <laughs> Um, she didn't usher, but I was mm -hmm. on the usher board. Any activity, um, and so I kind of, in my older years, stared away yeah. from from church because it was like that was my entire life. Yeah. That's what I knew. Yeah. Um, but there are some amazing. I want to talk about the relationship. I know that we're you know talking about the breast cancer mm -hmm. and how you fought that, but for that person that's out there who has had a a toxic relationship. What is some advice that you would give to them, especially as it pertains to um, harboring those feelings yeah. that then in return, um, I'm going to go ahead and say it caused you to get sick. sick. Exactly. Um, first of all, you need to pray and ask God mm -hmm. if that person that has come into your life, it, are they there for the purpose of your mate? Because mm -hmm. um, some people can come for a season, reason or a lifetime. And a counterfeit can also present itself to your preferences. Okay. So you need to know the difference between the God sent and the counterfeit. Mm. And I did not pray and ask God to show me that. Yes, yes. So, and that can negate a lot of the toxic relationships that we fall into if you seek God first in, in your relationships. Yeah, I know uh, there have been a lot of times that I went out. Uh, well, not a lot of times, but there have been some times <laughs> that I went out and actually um, did the opposite of, of mm -hmm. what was God directed. And because yeah. I went off of my own emotions own. Mm -hmm. and I went off of my own feelings mm -hmm. and I wanted to experience life. Mm -hmm. And I, I really experienced yeah. some uh, some life altering issues mm -hmm. and uh, environments that I didn't really want to be a yeah. part of because I didn't ask him first. Mm -hmm. I did not ask yeah. him first. And it's like, if we say we trust God, we need to trust him fully. Mm -hmm. It's like he made us so he should know who he has designed for us. Yes. Yes. So, so now the, the topic of breast cancer is um, something that I really want to get into mm -hmm. a little bit deeper because a lot of the times we hear people say that they've been diagnosed with it. Um, but if you haven't really gone through yeah. any health challenging issues mm -hmm. you don't really know how that person feels yeah and so I want to know what it was like um and I understand that you're a survivor and you mm -hmm. didn't look at it as a death sentence but what was your immediate reaction because I, mm -hmm. I'm gonna pray that you were the one that said <laughs> oh you know god I got this no. I'm gonna fight it <laughs> but however we know that that's not that's really not the really. case when um I first got the call um my doctor asked me, she said, Wanda, are you alone? And I'm like, why is she asking me? You know that? So I was like, yeah. And she said, um, the Bobsy came back and she said, you have breast cancer. Those four words, mm. you have breast cancer, changed my entire presence. Mm. I can still remember I was standing up talking to her on the phone. I fell straight down to the floor. It felt like someone had punched me. Wow. You know, in my stomach, hearing those words, you have breast cancer. And I had three sons, so my thought was, am I going to die? I mean, that's your first initial, you know, thing. And then it was like, you know, I got to fight. I got to fight. Yes. I got to, you know, fight for my sons. You know, I don't want them to be without a mother. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, after I went through the surgeries, I had three surgeries and okay. all of the radiation. I felt less than a woman 
in the beginning. Um, because if you look at TV, let's say for an hour, mm -hmm. you're going to see all types of commercials. Yes. You're going <laughs> to see your commercials that show women with like push-up bras, you know, something sexy. Mm -hmm. And then when you have had breast surgeries and whether you've had a lumpectomy or a mastectomy, you feel not whole mm -hmm. per se because parts have been taken from you yeah. and it makes you feel like a betrayal because it's like why did my body betray me i what did i do for my body to betray me and that's how i felt wow so you um kind of blamed yourself for it yes because no one knew where it came from then you know you have all of these um statistics well it could be the pollution it could be your diet it could but it was like for the most part i was healthy i was active i was mm -hmm. playing tennis i was on tennis teams i was traveling with tennis um so i was active and didn't have a family history mm -hmm. so, so I, I blamed like, myself why, why yeah. is this happening why to is me? this happening and to me you could be the only cause for yeah, it yeah but then god turned it around and then my favorite scripture ended up being isaiah 66 and 9 okay. i will not cause pain without allowing something new to be born wow. so god started pouring that into me and so i was like okay i'm going to take this because i didn't see people that looked like me mm -hmm. in the cancer center and but yet statistically african american women are diagnosed more okay so, so they, we have a higher rate we have a, so i'm like well where are we if i'm the only one in here then where is yeah. everyone so it gave an opportunity for me to educate myself educate others and it drew me back to god okay. which was probably the main yeah, yeah. reason yeah. <laughs> <laughs> getting rid of uh whatever the poison is in yeah. your body so that you can have that connection and get yeah, closer that to one him. on one because it was just me and him in that apartment. Wow. Yeah. I love talking about intimacy with Christ. Yeah. It is, it is an amazing experience. Yes. It's like nothing that you could ever think of, imagine. Yes. And until you've had that moment, yes. you'll never understand. It Correct. takes you, wow, it takes you somewhere really, really yeah. far. Um, so it's like now you are in this space mm -hmm. where you realize that you have to continue to go on yes. and you decide that you're going to now be an advocate mm -hmm. and you're going to speak about this and yeah. you're going to share <laughs> what was that feeling like because i know you know getting into the space where you want to share publicly mm -hmm. it can be a little terrifying yeah. sometimes so you know for that person that may want to to experience sharing and helping someone else mm -hmm. what is some advice that you would give to them well, for me, um, I'm the oldest out of five children, and I'm, I would say I'm the most reserved one. Okay. So I was never the one to be out in the open. That's my other siblings. Mm -hmm. But God answered my silent prayer. When I didn't see people in the cancer center that looked like me, I said, God, let me be the face of breast cancer. Wow. And that's how things just started, you know, from me journaling. I started giving breast cancer speeches, and then people started requesting me to speak and I'm like, wow. really? And then the books and it just, it, God just started using me to be a voice. That's awesome. Yeah. That's amazing. So if you have a story, just go out there and jump out and share it. I believe share that, it, yeah. you know, and in the scripture, it says that we live um, by sharing our testimony. testimony. Exactly. And so that's amazing that you have that spirit mm -hmm. that you're doing that. And we're going to hit on it just a little bit. But go ahead and tell everybody what the topics of or the titles of your books are, because okay. we have three amazing books <laughs> sitting right here. Um, if you can go ahead and hit on uh, just the topics and we'll talk about that okay. um, after we come back from commercial break. Sure. My first book is called The Fight Within. The second book I co-authored, and that's called The Art of Activation. And my newest book is called The Storm Has a Ministry Too. All right, guys. So y'all hear that? She is a serial author <laughs> and she is out here sharing the powerful information about breast cancer, how she survived it, how she got through it, how she did not let that become a death sentence, That's right. but how she turned the, the, the tide, the trajectory of the whole scene and made it a life, life sentence. sentence. So guys, I know that uh, the community is is vast. It's, it's a lot yes. of people out there who are going through these experiences. If you go ahead and share right now, we're coming right back 
We're going to talk more about this amazing topic of how you can, too, be a survivor and live in purpose. All right, guys, this is Kiana F. Brown, my amazing guest, Wanda Briscoe. This is Forgiveness Friday, and we'll be right back after this commercial break. Hey, Forgiveness Nation, I'm here with Kiana. Just got to meet her and I love what she stands for about forgiveness and letting things go. And we just believe as you do that, you'll see God's blessings in new ways. So we bless you, we pray for you and believe in you'll see an awesome 2019. Guys, it's Kiana F. Brown. You're tuning back into Forgiveness Fridays. My amazing guest, Wanda Briscoe, is here in studio with us. And of course, you know you're tuning in to us on Urban Style <laughs> Media. Uh, and we have some amazing information to share. So we were just giving a, a short recap. We were talking about an experience that Ms. Briscoe had surviving and yes. thriving through breast cancer and I know that there that your mom or your sister or your cousin your aunt niece there are a lot of us who are going through these things mm -hmm. and what you mentioned was that there are so many people that you saw in the treatment yeah. facility that did not look it like not you look like so me. you decided to be an advocate for that and go out here and share the message yes. of how you can survive and beat this illness now you've written a couple of books yeah. a serial <laughs> author uh the first book i believe it is the fight within yes now tell us a little bit about the fight within the fight within is my first book and that came out in 2012 and that is actually um that was my journal when i was diagnosed with breast cancer i started journaling okay and um I was giving speeches. I would drive because I was living in Atlanta mm -hmm. and I would come to Maryland and give speeches and um, a publishing company contacted me. They oh, had wow. heard about my speeches and awesome. said, send us your manuscript. I sent them my manuscript and then two months later, the book came out. OK, now I'm, I'm reading here in your <laughs> bio that First Lady Michelle Obama and Bishop T.D. Yes. Jakes recognized you for this book. Yes, I sent the book to them and... You know, I didn't think anything of it. And mm -hmm. then one day, me and my aunt, we went to the post office to check my P.O. box. And I see this big letter from, the, you know, the outside said the White House. And I'm like, why would the White House <laughs> be, be sending, sending me something? something? And then I opened it up and it was a letter from First Lady Michelle Obama, you know, acknowledging the wow. book and to keep pushing. It was a very encouraging letter that I wow. have framed in a special place in my house. And the same with the Potter's house. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome to know that um, you're making an impact and yeah. then for you to have um, acknowledgement for you to keep going. Sometimes we get in a space where we're doing so much yeah. um, and, and we, we want to share. We want to get the message out. Mm -hmm. But then that old insecurity yeah. starts to creep in. And um, mm -hmm. that was just nothing but confirmation yes. for you to keep going. <laughs> And um, then we want to talk about the art of activation. Wow. The art of activation, that was, that came out of nowhere. I love that title, by yeah. the way. One of my friends saw an article in the Essence magazine and she sent it to me. They was, um, they was looking for authors nationwide mm. to collaborate on a book. It's kind of like a chicken soup of the soul. Okay. Inspirational book. So I submitted my name. Didn't think anything of it. Next thing I know, I get an email saying you've been chosen wow. as one of the authors. So each author in the art of activation, we had to write our own chapter. Okay. And my chapter in the book is called Using the Power of Forgiveness. And that book came out in 2014. Now, I didn't know that. I did not yeah. know that. <laughs> And I'm, I'm going to share this really quickly. Yeah. Um, Ms. Briscoe actually attends my church, yes. like United Ministries. And I, I just said, I was like, I needed to have a guest. Um, mm -hmm. There was something that happened with the guest that came on that was supposed to come on today. Mm -hmm. And literally, I saw you and it was like light bulb. <laughs> it was like, 
you got to have Wanda, mm -hmm. you know. And so just I want to encourage people to be um, aware of their surroundings. Mm -hmm. There's greatness all around you. Yeah. And you just have to realize that you can tap into that, mm -hmm. too. And I'm so grateful that I had that aha uh -huh yeah. moment. <laughs> we're not just like literally we were mm -hmm. like about to be in worship and praise. I know, and I'm right? Like, <laughs> I need you to come on the show because I knew, you know, a little bit about your story, but I had no idea. And yeah. then to understand that your uh, your topic in that book was about forgiveness. Yes. I had no no, yep, and that came out in 2014. Look, y'all, 2014, I, I don't know what I was doing. In 2014, <laughs> I, did, I do know we had Pooch Dolls Pet Grooming, but other than that, I really don't know. But you also are a business owner. Yes. Okay, so tell us more about your business. Um, my business is called Mariposa Enterprises, and Mariposa is Spanish for butterfly. Yes, I learned that today. Yes, and I'm known <laughs> for butterflies. I have a lot of butterfly tattoos. And my business is a year old, just celebrated. Congratulations. A year old. And my, what my business does, um, I have had formal training at Calvert Memorial Hospital. And I was in a program called Survivors Offering Support. Okay. For four years. And we trained newly diagnosed women with, can with breast cancer. Wow. So we had to go through a lot of formal training. And then when the hospital didn't receive the funding for their program, it just went away but I'm like but there's women that, that still need, that help. need help so I started my own business and it's not just for women because I've um had men mm -hmm. in the program so it is for all cancers okay I go to their house I teach their families wow. how to care for a person that has That's cancer awesome. I teach them the proper etiquette because there is an etiquette there are things that you should say and shouldn't say mm -hmm. to someone who has cancer I pray with them and I just sit with them and let them vent. Certainly. And if they need me to go to a chemo treatment or whatever, mm -hmm. I do that as well. That is amazing. That's yeah. wonderful. Good work. So it's a way of giving back. Yes. That, yeah. I, I really, really love that. Yeah. Um, and that will lead us into the word time. Okay. And the word time of the show is where we go from the words definition <laughs> and the world's definition. Oh. So I'm going to read uh, the definition. I'm reading today from... Uh, the word storm mm. and so when I think about you and all of the things that you've gone through because there's more than what this paper houses yeah. <laughs> and so literally we go through different storms mm -hmm. we get into different traps and we get into different positions where we have to understand what the storm is mm -hmm. and so the definition in the dictionary is a violent disturbance of the atmosphere yes and that's merely us going through or finding Find out that information mm -hmm. or you having a breakup in your relationship mm -hmm. it's the disturbance, disturbance of your atmosphere and so the scripture that I chose for today is Psalms 107 28 and 31 mm -hmm. Yet when they cried out, the Lord in their trouble, the Lord brought them out of their distress. He calmed the storm and its waves quieted down. That. So they rejoiced. The waves became quiet and he led them to their desired heaven. Let oh. them give thanks to the Lord for his gracious love and his awesome deeds on behalf of mankind I like that so that's just it there's the answer right there whenever you're going through that storm whenever your atmosphere mm -hmm. has been disrupted you know who you need to call on yes. he will quiet your storm mm -hmm. he will give you a peace that's yes. everlasting he will allow for you to go through whatever challenges may come mm -hmm. whether it might be a, a, a diagnosis mm -hmm. whether you might have heartache whether there's something going on in your family, a toxic relationship, as you discussed, yeah. God will allow for you to have joy mm -hmm. in spite of. Yes. And so I want to encourage you today, if you are dealing with any health issues or anything that is bringing you uh, bad feelings, a heartache, mm -hmm. to know that, who, to know who your source is and yes. rely on your source yes. to help you get through it. I agree. So I, what do you think about that the scripture? Is, that is so good. I mean, because then that goes into the last, the title of my last book. Mm -hmm. The storm has a ministry too. A lot of times when we're going through a storm, we don't know why. Mm -hmm. Or it's like, why am I going through this? But do, it, everything we go through has a purpose. Yes. You know, like Romans eight twenty eight. You know, all things happen for the good to them that love the Lord. And a lot of times what we're going through is not necessarily for us. 
is for someone else. <laughs> yes. And that's something I had to learn. I always tell people breast cancer didn't happen t- um, to me. It happened for me. Yes. So it was a way for me to get back to God, number one. Mm-hmm. And it was a way for me to educate people and to learn forgiveness through it. Yes. That is the important yes. factor. Um, so I am so honored that I have you here today. Thank you. And you shared that, but I want everyone out there um, who may be in need of your organization or know someone that is in need of your organization, mm-hmm. how can they reach out to you? How okay. can they stay connected with they you? They can get connected with me. My website is wandabrisco.org, and there's a contact um, tab on my page. And you just fill that out, and I will respond. All right. Um, any any social media? Social media. I'm on Facebook, Wanda Briscoe. Um, Instagram is I am Wanda Briscoe. <laughs> All right, guys. So stay connected with her. Uh, tune into whatever it is that she's doing. I know right. that um, you're doing some great things. You just had a conference. I just had my first conference in June. That was called Tragedy to Triumph. Okay. Um, and then my book that just came out in May, The Storm Has a Ministry too. That will be turned into a stage play in 2020. Yeah, I heard that. I yeah. got the, the yeah. whirlwind that that was going to be a yeah. stage play. And um, I don't know if they're they're looking for any actresses. Yes, yes we're going to do a casting call. I have a desire to be an actress. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Amongst everything else. But uh, I just want to thank you again and thank all of the viewers who have tuned yeah. in. And if you haven't shared this message, I'm going to implore you to share it right now because there's someone that needs to hear this message, that needs yes. to know that it's not a death sentence, it's a life but it's sentence. merely a life sentence. Yes. And you can go on and you can inspire others. Yeah. You can help them through, uh, just as you have with your business, mm-hmm. you can help them through their challenges. Mm-hmm. If you see a hole that needs to be filled, go ahead and fill that yes. hole and step in and be the blessing that God has designed for you to be. Now guys, yes. I wanna let you know what's going on with me. Yes. So you know that I've been sharing on social media about the Uplift Project. It's Project Uplift, the documentary, Could Life Be Different? And we've been doing recordings all over the city. And I'm excited. We're almost finished. This weekend we have Saturday and Sunday Mm. to finish recording that and get that out. And I just wanted to have a message to the world in a different format. You know, we come Mm -hmm. live every Friday with Forgiveness Fridays. But... This allows us to see more into the soul of the person who's being able to forgive Mm -hmm. and to help someone else forgive. So that's what we have going Mm -hmm. on tomorrow Um, on behalf of uh, the magazine that I am with his favor. I will be at the conference Mm -hmm. unapologetically uh, stepping into your greatness. And that is going to be an amazing event. And I can't wait because (laughs) I am unapologetic about everything that God has designed for me to be. Mm -hmm. And I'm just gracious to be in the room. But guys, that's going to be it for now. Um, If you have anything else that you would like to share with the viewers, maybe one last word of encouragement um, for that woman that Mm -hmm. is just at the verge of breaking. Um, For someone that's at the verge of breaking, I would just tell you to keep pushing, keep going, turn your pressure, turn your pain and your pressure into victory. Um, just keep going. You don't know what the end is going to be, but just, um, just know that God is always on your side. He will give you the strength that you would need to go through and put all of your trust in God to get through it. All of it. All of it. Not a little bit, but all of it. (laughs) All of it. So guys, I want to thank you so very much for tuning in. My name is Kiana F. Brown and my lovely guest, Ms. <laughs> Wanda Briscoe. We are about to tune out shortly from Urban Style Media. If you have not gone and liked the page, I want to encourage you to do so because there are other shows who have amazing content that I'm pretty sure you're missing out on. So go ahead and tune in, like that page so that you can see what's going on here at Urban Style Media. And I want you to always remember that today is your stepping stone for a greater tomorrow. And in everything, always forgive. And remember that you have to live it, do it, and be it. All right, guys, I'll see you you next week. For the weather, I'm going to let you